for the second day in a row, I am actually legitimately surprised by something. Enos Cantor, he was released by the Houston Rockets last week. He had been a sparingly used role player all season with the Celtics. They trade him to Houston right before the trade deadline, and the Rockets immediately release him. I don't even think it was 24 hours, and they cut him. Now, the conspiracy theorist in me, I want to believe that this was the NBA's way of righting a wrong for their masters in China. A few years ago, as you guys know, when Daryl Morey was the GM in Houston, he spoke out in support of the Freedom Fighters in Hong Kong. So part of me wants to believe this entire Enos Cantor scenario, him being traded from Boston and then released by the Rockets, was orchestrated by the NBA front office as an act of contrition to China. I know it's far-fetched. I don't have any proof that it happened, and it probably did not happen that way. But that's the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that news last week. Anyway, back to me being surprised. The Washington Post, it is generally a woke piece of shit. I can't tell you how many times that I've based an entire video off one article in the Washington Post. It's like a more prestigious version of Deadspin. So imagine my surprise when I see this headline at the Washington Post from yesterday. Enos Cantor was cut for exposing how U.S. corporations became agents for communist China. Um, did they forget which side they were on? Since when did American state-run media start calling out the real human rights violations in China? They're supposed to be loyal comrades and create fake human rights violations in America. This is the second or the third time this has happened since the Olympics began. CNN has been critical of China as well, but they performed their act of contrition by producing a pro-China propaganda ad and aired it during the Olympics. Now, I have seen many people claim that Enos Cantor would have been cut regardless if he had never spoken out against China. He would have been out of the NBA anyway. That's what they claim. That is complete bullshit. There are plenty of NBA teams that can use a 29-year-old 6'10 center averaging 11 and 8 throughout his career. Enos Cantor played in 72 of 82 games last season, started damn near half of them. He averaged a double-double, 24 minutes a game. Right before this season, he started to speak out against China. He called out LeBron James. He called out the NBA. And what happened? What happened to his playing time? He was a healthy scratch 11 of the first 13 games of the season. Enos Cantor played a total of nine minutes the first three weeks of the NBA regular season. Huh. I wonder if China pulling Celtics games off the air had anything to do with it. The NBA has made several attempts to silence Enos Cantor, but the more they tried to silence him, the louder he got. He's all over Fox News, CNN, various mainstream media outlets. He changes his last name to Freedom. He was in your face. From the perspective of the NBA front office, he became a nuisance, an embarrassment. More importantly, he became a problem. If you don't believe Enos Cantor speaking out against China had everything to do with the end of his NBA career, you're either a social justice warrior or a dumbass. And to be honest with you, they're one and the same. Dumbass is one of the many synonyms for an SJW. Enos Cantor told the Washington Post that over the last several weeks, he has had numerous NBA players and coaches tell him that this season was essentially his farewell tour. His NBA career was coming to an end. They wished him well told him that they hoped he won a championship in Boston. Coaches insinuated to him that his crusade against China was costing the NBA millions and millions of dollars. There's no way the league was going to allow him to stay. How much more proof do you need that all of this ties back to his criticism of China? I'll give you more. Check out this tweet from a Chinese government official after Enos Cantor was released. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. KC. This man is a member of the Chinese media. He is not a government official. They are one in the same. He works for China Daily, an English language media outlet in China. Guess who owns it? Guess who owns China Daily? The Chinese Communist Party. Just like Stephen A. Smith, this man is a paid propagandist. 
The NBA's annual revenue is $8.3 billion a year. You know how much of that revenue comes from China? What do you think? One billion? Two billion? Half a billion? Five billion dollars. Of the eight billion in revenue, five billion comes from China. Is it starting to make sense now? Why Adam Silver swallows the load from China? Is it starting to make sense now why he doesn't give a fuck about the American market? Adam Silver doesn't give a shit that NBA ratings are tanking domestically. Last year, 400 million people in China watched the NBA. That one and a half to two million people watching on ESPN or TNT, it's meaningless. China has more people consuming the NBA product than we have living here in America. Like I told you guys yesterday, this all comes down to greed on the part of American corporations and China's agenda to weaken America so they can take over the world. Xi Jinping, he wants to be the world's superpower, not America. Remember when I said yesterday, the Chinese government is infiltrating us on all fronts? Remember when I told you they're sending propagandists to our colleges and universities to be educated so they can come back to China to propagandize the population? That dude I showed you a few minutes ago, the editor of China Daily, guess where he was educated? Stanford. American corporations are actively selling out their own country so they can break into the Chinese market. Last fall, the CEO of Nike, he came out and admitted America is no longer their primary focus. They are focused on China. These corporations don't give a shit that Xi Jinping is a dictator. They don't give a shit that he's implementing genocide on segments of his population. Hell, Shamath Palpatine admitted that to us last month. These people are willing to sell out their own country, sell out their integrity, put up with the bullshit of a dictator, humiliate themselves if necessary, all for money and power. Enos Cantor is proof. All it takes is one person to speak out, one person to remove the curtain, pull back the curtain, and these powerful corporations go into panic mode. The NBA, as powerful as they are, it took one person to have an impact. We talk about hypocrisy on the channel all the time. There is not a sports league in the country more hypocritical than the NBA. Adam Silver, he will allow LeBron James to denigrate cops, alienate half the population, call Americans racist. It's been going on for years. Enos Cantor calls out the genocide in China something everyone's talking about, and within four months, the NBA ends his career. Well, KC, he's just a role player. This was an easy decision for the NBA. He became a problem. That's irrelevant. Outside of maybe LeBron James, it doesn't matter who speaks out against China, Dame Lillard, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. If they went on a crusade against the CCP, they would be out of the NBA too. Adam Silver's not going to risk $5 billion every year because one of his superstar players is against the Chinese government. Compliance is not requested. Compliance is mandatory. The reason those guys I just listed don't speak out? They're making too much money. Enos Cantor was making about $2.5 million this season. It is much easier to walk away from $2.5 million than it is to walk away from $40 million. Not to mention the endorsement money NBA superstars receive from China. Now, that is not me denigrating the sacrifice of Venus Cantor. This dude made the ultimate sacrifice. The American state-run media, they just love to talk about the sacrifices of Colin Kaepernick and Megan Rapino. Neither one of them made a sacrifice. They're both fucking opportunists. Colin Kaepernick's not a hero. Enos Cantor is the hero. Why isn't Netflix producing a documentary about him? Someone who actually struggled. Someone who was actually oppressed. I don't need to see a documentary on Colin Kaepernick. What struggle did he go through? What oppression did he go through? It would be like a documentary on me. Raised in private school and a loving home with both parents, KC struggled through his teenage years with hundreds of friends and parties. He had a crossroads in his life at 16 or at 18 when he was faced with the decision of what college his parents were going to pay for. I've never struggled. Neither has Colin Kaepernick. Neither has Megan Rapino. She was raised in a loving two-parent home. Her father was her soccer coach as a child. The only struggle Megan Rapino went through was picking out a pair of soccer shoes. 
Colin Kaepernick, Megan Rapino sacrificed nothing. Both have made millions of dollars off endorsement deals. Both are considered heroic for fabricating American human rights violations and victimizing themselves. Corporations were lining up to have Colin Kaepernick and Megan Rapino represent them. We hate America too. We want you to be the face of our brand. Then you have Enos Cantor, who grew up in oppression. Basketball was his escape, his ticket to America. Football for Colin Kaepernick, it was a way to keep him busy and active as a child. Basketball for Enos Cantor was his way to live in freedom. 20 years ago, Nike, Adidas, Coke, they would be lining up to pay Enos Cantor. ESPN might have produced a documentary on him. You know how many endorsement deals Enos Cantor has been given or offered? Zero. None. We all know why. Enos Cantor is an opponent to their agenda. They don't want his endorsement. They want him silenced. Now, credit to Mark Thiessen at the Washington Post and the Washington Post itself for being one of very, very few media outlets who came to the defense of Enos Cantor and exposed Adam Silver and the NBA for what they are, tools for the Chinese agenda. All right, let me know what you think. My conspiracy theory I laid out at the beginning, the NBA orchestrating Enos Cantor's trade to Houston so the Rockets could release him as an act of contrition for Daryl Morey. Do you think that's far-fetched, or could it have happened? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.